It's an organised mess. Um, so basically, I've got a new video for you today and it is all about the last project that I just finished at Great Wakering School. It was painting seven different murals for them. So um, we'll just crack on right into it. Hope you enjoy. So first I prepared the boards by painting them in three layers of gesso. This just helps the paint to stick better to the board and also gives it a good background colour so that it really shows up the colours of the acrylics I was putting on top. And then the first board I decided to do was the butterfly board because I knew it'd be one of the biggest boards and the first thing I did was make a template of a butterfly's wing so that I could get um, a good symmetry on the wings and so I just made this with bits of newspaper and tape. Then once I'd finished making the template, I just drew around the edge with a pencil and then flipped it over to the other side and drew around that side with a pencil. This was just to ensure that I had nice even butterfly wings. Then I just basically proceeded to put in all of the details, which was the nice different uh, kind of sections of the butterfly's wing where all the different colours were going to go and I decided to do this piece as a giant paint by numbers which I have done before in another video and so I wanted to make it look like a nice big kind of uh, stained glass window because um, they always look really nice um, with lots of vibrant colour coming through and so I sectioned up all of the little pieces into kind of like triangular shapes just to make it even more kind of impressive and stand out and I just went round the entire thing with a thick black marker so that it would be easy to identify which pieces to paint. I wanted to the background to have a kind of slightly insect-like feel to it as well, hence doing those kind of um, sort of triangular block kind of shapes because if you look very close up at a dragonfly's wing for instance, um, it, it kind of looks like that close up. So this board was actually made of four quite large boards. Um, and I just put them all together to make one absolutely huge board <laughs> as this was going somewhere near the entrance of the school so I wanted it to be a real standout piece. And in the background I've been adding leaves and flowers just to make it a little bit more exciting, a little bit more variation and actually the whole picture shows the life cycle of a butterfly. So you have the eggs, the caterpillar, the cocoon, and the butterfly at the top. So then I went on to number it. I didn't video that part because that could have been a little bit boring. And that's when I got all the children to come in and help me paint, and they did a fantastic job staying within the lines and uh, picking and choosing nice colours and uh, mixing new colours which is also quite a good skill to learn. Um, I didn't get any footage of this um, but I got some nice pictures. Will you... 
Then once most of the colour was done, I decided to do the black outline myself. Um, this really made the butterfly wing stand out even better. I was definitely glad to choose a butterfly. There's something about the representation of a butterfly, the fact that it uh, goes in, uh, grows in stages um, seemed quite symbolic to me of being in school. So um, in the middle, I put the school's kind of main key words that they follow, which was uh, grow, aspire, achieve, respect and then at the very top I added my own which was blossom um, because you want to blossom when you go to school. There was half of the butterfly done and then the whole butterfly and then I just did the two bottom panels with the other children and here it is grow aspire achieve respect and blossom I was super pleased with the way this one turned out I actually think it's my favorite one just because it's so colorful and I love the gradient in the wings the way it gets lighter um, yeah, so I'm just really happy with this and it was great for the children to do. I thought they did really well with it, um, not too difficult and um, yeah, it looks marvellous, if I do say so myself. <laughs> comes the alien mural and this was actually a competition which I'll explain now. So yeah basically here we have one of the templates that I made, so it's a little bit uh, chewed up, um, but basically uh, the children had this area to draw in and this area was going to be left blank so that I could put a mirror in place where the children could look at themselves and be the alien as they came into the school hall. So the competition winners, I couldn't actually just choose two because originally it was going to be just two winners. I actually chose one from every year group um, because they were so good and I chose two main winners and these were the ones that had the mirrors in place where the children could look and see themselves as the aliens. And as you can see from the pictures, um, they did a really good job and they translated really well um, onto the piece. Um, I didn't get any footage painting this one either, uh, sorry about that, <laughs> but I've got lots of pictures and um, it came out really good and the children really enjoy it. They've been poking their heads in before lunchtime every day and um, yeah, so that was a good successful one. Plus they've got something um, that uh, represents the work they've done there for a long time, so that's nice too. <laughs> There's me. Waving. I loved the creativity I saw from these pieces, they were brilliant. The one with the tadpoles in the belly was reception. The reception children were looking at the life cycle of a frog, so I can definitely see that what they were learning in class translated into their final piece. Next I did the reception mural. Um, so this was a, a welcome mural um, to go right in the reception where people came in and so I started off myself by doing a background and then I took this into the reception area as in reception children <laughs> so key stage one and I got all the key stage one children to help me with stenciling and hand printing and simple techniques that are very very effective when you put them all together and it was definitely very effective it's very colorful and it is very welcoming in my opinion too and then i also just drew in with posca pens at the end just some people holding hands going over the bridge because i thought that looked quite cute and i thought it felt very community and um, kind of sweet Ooh, 
welcome so the very last couple of murals I did were the four big giant ones that went in the hall and these were following a storyline and the storyline was about this little girl who goes to school and she's a bit apprehensive at first but then she goes through um, this tree that has a little plaque that says world of discovery and she meets people animals and sees things and experiences things all things that are in the curriculum and um, so the first board represents reception in year one the second board uh, year two year three third year four year five and the very last one is year six and etc what comes after that so as she goes through the different murals she grows in size and uh, she learns all about things like vikings and you know geography um, art artists and art and things like that so I just wanted to make a mural that was very um, kind of where's Wally in a way you can look at it and still um, you know you haven't seen it all so you have to keep looking at it and you'll see new things arise each time you look at it and um, hopefully I managed to portray this um, through this mural and as you can see the very first one I've actually painted the school um, the school that I was <laughs> situated in, Great Wakering, and um, so it's it's a little bit personal to this particular school. I did get some help from the students with this one um, as well. Um, unfortunately, I'm not allowed to show that. Um, but um, <laughs> so I, I did get a lot of help with this one too. And I think it's really nice that um, the children got to have a lot of inclusion in these murals and they seem to really enjoy it as well, um, which is exactly what I want to do kind of with my art career. I want to introduce people to art and have them involved in whatever I'm doing just so that they feel more included um, but yeah on this this one is the uh, second board I was working on and um, got a little Van Gogh in the corner <laughs> um, where I did it in the style of Van Gogh so in every single panel there's quite a lot going on um, but the main things, the main kind of themes that I have going on are that the tree in each painting has changed so um, it changes seasonally. So the first one is a autumn tree and the next one is a winter tree. So the second one that I'm working on now has got little bits of snow on the branches. And the third one is a spring tree which is represented as a blossom tree and the fourth one is a palm tree obviously representing summer and the time that you leave school um, to either start a new year or even go on to secondary school so um, I had that as a theme running through and then I also had her th uh, the little girl's theme being that she grows older as she goes along her journey so she gets just a little bit taller in each uh, piece and um, she also has uh, ginger hair just so that she stands out because I noticed orange was a colour that I don't use a great deal in painting. So using uh, ginger colour hair means that she stands out a little bit and hopefully it's uh, nice and fun for the children to try and spot her in the painting. And something as well that um, I kind of wanted to make significant with these boards was the kind of magic that emanates from the tree and I did this using lots of swirls of like gold, bronze and silver and um, kind of stars and things like that uh, to make it seem like a kind of mystical, magical world where uh, you learn a lot. 
and um, I also wanted to have a couple of elements of like either 3D or textural um, kind of different things occurring just so it wasn't a totally flat image so one of the things especially uh, with this blossom tree that I enjoyed doing was cutting out little pieces of felt little felt flowers and felt leaves um, which if you open up the windows in the school hall they should flutter a little bit um, which just gives the um, piece a little bit more animation um, and also makes it a little bit more interesting um, oh yes going back to themes I almost forgot to say that in every river that runs through um, there is a word and that word is the school's teams so house teams so we've got um, Thames, Blackwater, Crouch and Roach and um, they obviously represent the different teams. You can be like Hufflepuff and Gryffindor. <laughs> Here I am working on the third board which I think actually ended up being my favourite board um, just in terms of composition because there was also a lot going on in this year group so uh, learning about lots of different things including my favourite things like Anglo-Saxons and Vikings and Tudors all stuff that I really enjoyed learning about as well as space um, and the Romans and things like that so I very much enjoyed drawing this one and I really enjoyed it when it was up as well I thought it looked uh, maybe like the most effective board um, especially because the tree was a blossom tree so it was kind of that pop of pink colour which uh, you don't see very often in nature landscapes so I thought that made it extra special um, every river I've got as well going on um, flows into the next mural so I tried to have um, I had to try to actually match them up which was also a bit of a difficult task because they were very very large <laughs> so here's me placing the board on top of the other one so you can actually see how I measured up the river um, I got a tape measure and I measured the one below it just to see where the river came to and I made sure it matched up to the one that I was drawing on top. So this is me drawing the very last board and this board had a lot of um, kind of negative subjects in it and I don't mean sort of ne you know history has um, sort of darker moments too so there was a lot to do with the war and uh, the Victorian era which although it was like a big industrial boom there was also a lot of um, things going on in the Victorian era which aren't necessarily you know happy times so it was quite difficult for me to think of ways to represent this that would be suitable for a school and um, wouldn't be too negative um, when displayed as an art piece so I tried to focus on um, remembrance a little bit um, and the um, the women's land army the things that were good that came out of these situations too just so that it didn't seem like a bit of a sad one to end the board on and then at the very end I decided to add in all of the characters or all of the main characters that were in the original boards just saying goodbye to the, the, uh, the little girl who has been on this journey. So this is the very last board. And this was them after they were installed. And I'm sorry about my shaky camera work. I was actually trying to follow the pathway in which the little girl takes, but um, yeah, sorry if it is a bit shaky. As you can see, in the end, I didn't just paint the rivers. I wanted them to stand out particularly um, because they were the houses. So I actually got pieces of tin foil scrunched them up and stuck them on and then painted 
and that just gave the river a little bit more animation, a bit more life to it, I think. And um, I also added in the, the words with mod rock, so they stood out a little bit too, so it's just that 3D element. And I did them in a lighter shade of blue, just so you could see, see them a little bit more clearly. So yeah, this is the second board. This Chinatown was a focus and Chinese New Year. Cavemen, Egyptians, England and London. This was the third board, as I was saying, my favourite of them all. I like the way the space um, section just cuts across the others and it kind of looks like the Viking ship is uh, sailing through space. Also slightly comical this one, sort of Henry VIII busting out of the tree <laughs> and the Romans having made a, a very straight road. And there she is just talking to the philosophers. and the Anglo-Saxon village, which just looks rather cute, I think. We mustn't forget the little alien in the uh, spaceship. <laughs> and Brazil as well. Brazil is in this one. <laughs> Apparently it's right next to Tudor England. <laughs> And here she is meeting some very friendly Vikings. And here is the very last one. And here we have uh, the Women's Land Army starting down in the bottom right corner with the poppies and the um, the Christmas truce where the footballers, sorry, the soldiers came up to play football. We've got the Victorians and <laughs> our character wearing a very stuffy little uh, Victorian dress, restrictive clothing. <laughs> My sister helped me paint those Victorian ladies. and Winston Churchill. And here we have our little character paying respects and leaving a poppy in the poppy field. And then we go to a Darwin figure and he's talking about monkeys and evolution. And I just had to include a few more people in this particular one. Stephen Hawking, Gandhi, uh, Martin Luther King and Rosa Parks. Uh, Frida Kahlo as well, just a few more people that were very influential in the world. And here we have her uh, finishing her, completing her journey um, and the X marks the spot on her map. And this particular tree, which is the final tree she encounters, is more to discover. And we have various things flying out of this one. Um, pertaining to her possible futures and this one's supposed to be a willow tree and there's uh, different strings and things attached to that one and then on the roots we have uh, all the different possible career paths she could take 
Um, we've got parent, scientist, artist, doctor, author, Olympian, psychologist, footballer, dentist. Um, obviously, there's many, many more. <laughs> and uh, yeah, that is it as a whole. It was very, very enjoyable painting these. Although it felt like it took a very, very long time. <laughs> they are probably the biggest paintings I have ever done. And the most amount of painting I've done in a very long time. Um, but I truly enjoyed it and I enjoyed meeting the children an awful lot too. Everybody was so welcoming and kind. And yeah, it's just been very enjoyable. And here's just some pictures for scale, just so you can see how large they were. So yes, this concludes my documentation of making these murals. I am sorry it's a little bit long, but I wanted to just go through them in full. Um, I didn't think I had enough footage to do separate videos on each um, board, so I just wanted to show you them all together. And I hope you enjoyed and I hope you uh, like the look of them. <laughs> anyway, thanks very much for watching. Um, I shall see you in a new video very soon. Thank you. Goodbye.